forward. In presenting these lessons on mental science, I do not claim to have discovered any new truth. The truth has been known in every age by a few. But the great mass of people has never even dreamed that we live in a mental and spiritual world. Today, however, there's a great inquiry into the deeper meaning of life because the race has reached a state of unfoldment where a broader scope is possible. These lessons are an attempt to put into the spoken word and into print some of those great truths known to the enlightened of all ages. To suppose that the creative intelligence of the world would create man in bondage and leave him bound would be to dishonor that creative power which we call God. On the other hand, to suppose that God could make man as an individual without leaving him to discover himself would be to suppose an impossibility. Individuality must be spontaneous and can never be automatic. The seed of freedom must be hid within the shell of the human. But like the prodigal of old, man must make the great discovery for himself. Although the journey may at times seem hard and the burden too great to bear, man still feels within a subtle sense, a mystical presence, a divine reality. Thus, the inherent nature of himself is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. We will do well to listen to this inner voice, for it tells us of a life wonderful in its scope, of a love beyond our fondest dreams, of a freedom which the soul craves. But the great love of the universe must be one with the great law of its own being, and we must approach love through the law. This, then, is the teaching, love and law. As the love of God is perfect, so the law of God is also perfect. We must understand both. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. I wish to express my appreciation to the authors whose names are mentioned following the different lessons in this course of instruction, as well as to many others whose names are not mentioned. The truth comes to us from all sources, and our understanding of it is the result of the time, thought, and effort of thousands of people who have given their lives to its study. I wish to express special appreciation to Miss Anne Shipman of Boston, Massachusetts, without whose untiring efforts it is not probable that these manuscripts would have ever been gotten in shape for publication. And to my mother, whose great faith in these teachings has inspired me with the hope and the belief that they may be a benefit to those who study them. The Science of Mind Yourself O oh, weary heart, laden with earth's weight and care, O oh, feet, stumbling on the way, bleeding and bare, O oh, arms outstretched and hands upheld in prayer, O oh, back which so oft has felt the lash and rod, O oh, soul which cries aloud for the living God, O oh, life struggling to free itself from the clod. Know this, there is no power from without. Yourself must answer every fear and meet all doubt with some divine indwelling power which you yourself upon yourself shall shower and giving take and taking give unto that life which you yourself shall live.